Well, in the United States, Donald Trump is set to announce proposals today aimed at curbing the economic fallout from the outbreak. Among those measures the president will be asking Congress for, a payroll tax cut and help for workers paid by the hour. And while that might help take the sting out of the stock market plunge, the government is getting a lot of criticism about how it's dealing with the coronavirus itself. And to talk more about that with me, let's bring in France 24's Doug Herbert. Doug, now, at least 729 people in some 36 states have tested positive for coronavirus. The response has been slammed by public health officials in the United States. What do they say the government's doing wrong? Uh, the response has been universally derided. Look, the story of the U.S. response and the U.S. administration's response so far has been one of very preventable missteps, lots of blunders, uh, misinformation from the White House chief executive himself. Um, and all of this taken together, this poor and chaotic management from the White House, uh, along with, coupled with what specialists say was really a failure early on to acknowledge the bigger picture. All of this has squandered and frittered away very precious precious time in coping with what is a real expanding crisis right now in the U.S. It's no longer a matter, uh, U.S. officials say, of containment, which is still officially the case in France. They're still trying to contain it. They haven't moved to the pandemic phase. It's uh, a matter of mitigation. This is spreading through now. It's in every region of the U.S. It's spreading through communities, people who have not traveled to the very high-risk areas, such as China or Italy or Iran or South Korea. They are also reporting cases right now. The testing has been extremely faulty. And all across the board, wherever you look, you look at a failure to work with Congress or cities or regions that are hard hit from the White House to come up with some sort of uniform response and to prepare the country, which it's now doing belatedly, to try to deal with this spreading crisis. Right, because it's not just the U.S. government that's being criticized. It's Donald Trump himself. himself. Yeah. What has he done that's made the containment effort so Look, much harder? You know, Jeannie, I hesitated to write, talk about Donald Trump in, your first, in, in my first answer because I don't want to make it sound like this is all about Donald Trump. But... It is a lot about Donald Trump. As the president of the United States, his rhetoric very much sets the tone, especially given how staunch his support is among his base and a lot of most of his, the overwhelming majority of Republicans in the country as well. So they look to the president. He has been a font of misinformation and confusion from the beginning, downplaying, minimizing. His rhetoric has been one of ultimate complacency. I just want to also bring up a tweet. And he's also accused his rivals, especially Democrats, of hyping, overhyping the coronavirus as a hoax. Um, and you'll see in that tweet at the end, you know, boasting about how he's perfectly coordinating this, a fine-tuned plan, his vice president at the helm, White House doing a vice president doing a great job, once again invoking the fake news media, doing everything possible to make us look bad, sad. Donald Trump's response to this has been both self-centered, focused on himself, politicizing what is really a public health issue, a public issue of great urgency right now, um, and trying to deflect any blame for himself. Is this something that's going to sink Donald Trump's presidency? Who knows? We don't even know where the, the, the virus is going to go right now. But his response, at least from the beginning, may give a lot of Americans pause uh, that whether or not their president really is in control of the situation, whether or not uh, it's more about himself in this case, and trying to flaunt his own knowledge and deriding the science and deriding his own public health experts. And what about the U.S. healthcare system itself? Has that been a help or a hindrance? Uh, a hindrance. Uh, 28 million, 30 million Americans are now uninsured, especially low-wage income workers who, as we know, are not immune from coronavirus cases. Uh, they can be hit by this, and they are more reluctant to go into quarantine if advised to do so by, by doctors, health experts. Why? Because they fear losing their pay and losing their jobs. Very belatedly, right now, everyone's singing from the same song sheet, including uh, Donald Trump and, his, and the Republicans, that they're going to extend aid. They're going to give people ways not to have to take a, a financial hit themselves if they have to cope with this illness. This. The Democrats, meanwhile, are coming up with an alternative proposal to the, the, t the payroll tax cut that the White House is proposing that a lot of people say will be ineffective. They want free coronavirus testing for all Americans. They want paid leave for those affected, 100 percent paid leave. They want um, expanded food subsidies for those on food subsidies who might not have as much money at their disposal. And they want uh, an expansion of federal unemployment programs, all of this aimed at trying to help those on the lowest rung of the ladder who are just is vulnerable, sometimes even more so, you might say, because they often ride public transportation, crowded trains, all of that, than a lot of richer, more affluent Americans. But America is very belatedly catching up right now, and it's been a very blundering and slow response so far. Doug, thanks for that. France 24's Doug Herbert.